Hey all here OS Reviews, today we're taking a closer look at the Imu Watch Phone Z6. This is one of the coolest smartwatches, but geared towards kids and has kind of a rugged form factor. But interestingly, it has pretty flagship components. It actually has a Qualcomm Snapdragon Wear 2100 chipset, along with a AMOLED display, has built-in GPS for tracking location, and even has dual cameras. In fact, it claims to be the world's first smartwatch that has dual cameras. What that means is the smartwatch can actually be tilted up away from the band, as you can see there, to snap images using the rear camera, as well as using the front-facing camera for video chatting, front-facing 5-megapixel lens, and an 8-megapixel rear camera that's also coated with a sapphire crystal lens and supports autofocus. Built-in Wi-Fi, built-in Bluetooth, as well as cellular connectivity as well durable and resistant to drops and shock, as well as materials being safe on the skin. And finally, a companion application that you can use to track the location of the watch and also communicate with it. Even the packaging is presented really well for a smartwatch geared towards kids, has this interesting prism shape. The box then snaps open like so, and the internal accents are orange. And because of all of these quality components, like a Qualcomm processor, AMOLED screen, it's going to come at a slightly higher cost. It retails for around $270. The bottom base here can also be detached to reveal the charging cable, as well as the quick user guide. The charger in particular is proprietary, but is magnetic. Attaches quickly onto the back of the smartwatch. Now just peeling off the protective wrap along the smartwatch to get us a closer look at this really interesting smartwatch. Has a built-in speaker and microphone, of course, for making calls and video chatting. Here it is next to something like the Amazfit Stratos from a few years back. This was another rugged smartwatch. We have a crown key on the side, which is textured and pretty tactile to press. And the band has all of these very delicate accents running across it with this blue theme that we have here that is uh, very soft in terms of the material choice, but uh, also seems quite durable. And finally, on the back here, we have the compartment for the Nano SIM if you want to pop in the 4G uh, services. Although it does mean that the watch doesn't have something like a heart rate monitor because it has the SIM card tray here instead. The health tracking parts are pretty rudimentary. Uh, primarily, they're focusing on communication and having a solid construction. Otherwise, to release the secondary camera, the rear-facing one, you have to press on this little pin, and then the whole thing kind of pops out from the bottom frame, as you can see there, and you can then easily position it at various angles for capturing uh, images, snaps, width, which is pretty clever, actually. The hinge is stiff, so you can position it in a variety of different angles, and it will hold the weight of the smartwatch basically and there it is that's the uh, secondary lens which is revealed along with the charging port is also underneath this to better protect it against the elements when you're not using it uh, the plating by the way here is constructed out of aluminum alloy so it does have some very solid uh, construction it snaps back together with a satisfying click and locks into place really without any issues so let's try to connect to wi-fi instead of using the cellular for now we can tap to enter our password and this is the keyboard that pops up as you can see there's a t9 style layout which is uh, not going to be uh, as easy to use as QWERTY, but on a smaller screen it still makes sense. And the touch responsiveness of the screen here is quite good and fluid. Technically the watch is running on a version of Android. We'll then proceed through, it tells us a beginner guide of how to interact with the watch just by swiping along to access the different panels, just like other smartwatches that we've seen in the past. And that is pretty much it. So here is the default kind of watch dial that it comes with. And then we have the lock screen as well. Swipe to unlock to activate the screen to prevent it from accidental touches. We can see if there's any notifications and it's a pretty sharp display, but text is on the smaller side. And if we long hold, we can change the watch dial. A few comes included. There's a mechanical. Uh, here is another one that takes a moment there just to switch. It's slightly animated as well. These are all dynamic, which looks pretty fancy uh, compared to static watch faces on most other devices and then we have just a analog style as well that you can opt for or go into other ones that you can install and download using the companion application and then just as a quick tutorial we can swipe down to access notifications swipe to the right to access our applications which by the way the themes are also matching the watch dial that you select so with this mechanical vibe we can see that the icons here have also been changed to match that which is showing some pretty good attention to details. So there's the chat, pedometer function, uh, other things like that. It takes a moment to jump into it, but afterwards uh, you can see a fair amount of information on here. Swipe over from the side there to go back by one page, just like other watches, 
and there is haptic vibration as well. So the watch will vibrate whenever you get a notification, for example. Revisit some of the apps here, and uh, for example, jumping into the camera, and it starts off with the rear-facing camera, as you can see there, and it will focus into an object after a few seconds, and you can also pinch in and pinch out to basically zoom in, and also switch into the front-facing camera just by swiping upwards like so. It's actually a pretty wide-angle lens, and surprisingly, it's quite bright. Even if you're indoors, it captures and exposes the image pretty well. Nothing looks too grainy. Now we can swipe on the edge here to go back, and we can also revisit things like our album to check out some of the previous images that we've taken. Outdoors, in good lighting conditions, you're able to see that everything is, again, pretty well exposed. Pinch to zoom using this tiny screen does work, but you can still make out most objects without too many problems. The fact that it is an autofocus lens is in itself pretty impressive on something so tiny. And otherwise, we can also record video on the watch. It's actually separated into a separate little tab there. The quality is capped at uh, around HD, so it's not going to be 4K or anything crazy. But again, for something small, it does work in a pinch. Now, as far as the App Center is concerned, again, you're able to find a few other kind of very limited games and productivity apps that you can install, but it's not quite as large of a selection as on Android Wear or an Apple Watch, since it is a bit more lockdown restricted geared towards kids, which makes sense, uh, but you can find a few more programs there. And then the theme here really just changes the appearance of the um, icons and the wallpapers, things like that. So you can choose between a few other kind of packages. There's Gothic, uh, here's one called Moon Myth. Take advantage of the bright and vibrant display and gives you a few more custom options to pick between, which is neat scrolling and the fluidity of the watch as a whole does feel quite smooth and pretty responsive. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory when it comes to the utility tools, the ability for you to add alarm clocks, and uh, take a look at the dialer pad if you're trying to make a phone call, and uh, that also works without any problems. Again, touchscreen responsiveness is quite good. You can also change things like the brightness, as well as uh, connect to Wi-Fi, take a look at if there's any profiles you want to set up, connect to Bluetooth, wireless headphones. You can also swipe over to the edge to take a look at your contacts, your family members and friends to install the companion app on their phone, and afterwards you'll be able to see their avatars showing up here in this quick list that you can very quickly dial. So for example, we're connected to the phone, and I'm assuming that, uh, let's say this phone belongs to a brother, and you can then tap on this here from the watch to begin a call, just using the microphone and speaker, or the video call. It says that the kid is calling, and it's basically showing us what the kid's camera is displaying at the moment, as you can see there. It doesn't look too shabby. And the application itself allows you to both answer, reject the call, and also shows you the location of where the watch or the person wearing it is at. You can also control if you want to look at the rear-facing camera or if you want to look at the person wearing the watch just by flicking back and forth between the camera lenses. And everything is actually pretty fluid in terms of what we're seeing, as you can see there, as long as the watch is connected to a pretty fast Wi-Fi network. And reception strength is actually quite good. You switch to a voice call instead if you would prefer that without looking at the cameras. We can also try out the chat functions, which do work pretty well. So this will allow you to, again, communicate via text messages to anyone in your family group that you set up from the companion app, again, to your contacts uh, that you also can assign or create new friends and new groups. So for example, with the same account that we're connected to this phone, this is brother account, you're able to uh, send over uh, basically voice messages. So hello, this is a voice message. And afterwards, they will send it over so we can tap to listen back. And you hear a notification on the phone there, it's also received it. Uh, you're also able to try swiping over to the right to send a animated emoji to express maybe a mood. You can also tap on that and it can be sent, as you can see there, as well as even take images voice changer, which allows you to also record your voice. Hello, this is the voice changer. And change it to a animated or a deeper sound as you can hear there. So you're able to also disguise your voice if you want to play around with those special effects. Um, and that's pretty much it. So you aren't able to actually text out anything via the chat app at the moment because the size is pretty restricted. Over on the phone's dashboard, we can see that our chat group with the kid directly has now sent over the aforementioned voice message, emoji, as well as the photo, which we can take a closer look at here more comfortably. It takes a moment for everything to go. Hello, this is a voice message. 
And again, the quality of the microphone on the watch is also surprisingly decent. It picks up your voice really without any problems, even if you're outdoors. Uh, from the companion app, though, you're able to not only send uh, voice messages back, you can also send out directly text messages. And we have a new icon there from Brother, and we can now see the message displayed. So pretty fast. And very briefly looking at some of the other features, you can also track the watch more specifically under this tab. And it'll also tell you the accuracy. You can take a look at a satellite view versus a map view. As well as under more, you can also see if there's any firmware updates to push over and monitor from the watch how many steps the person has walked. Class mode that will disable certain functions when you are learning, uh, depending on the child at certain hours in the day. You can all set up more manual controls using these settings. Even the mechanism for flipping up the screen, you can set so that each time that you flip it up from the casing, there's a sensor that will detect that and you're able to activate something like open up a certain app whenever you pop it upwards or even display a certain animation whenever you're doing that action. So that is more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the iMu Z6. Again, this is a smartwatch geared primarily for communication aimed at kids, but can also be worn by say adults or the elderly, if anyone really that wants a smartwatch more focused on communication, making calls, being able to video chat and take images, which are pretty unusual on any smartwatch design I do like quite a bit. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. It's been our closer hands-on look at the Emu Z6 smartwatch.